I got started in filmmaking. It's been a long road. Um, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and uh, I moved to New York to live with my brother, who was a musician, who was uh, on his way to songwriting for Madonna. He and I lived in the same apartment. And I became a kind of de facto studio assistant studio engineer to him, which put me in front of a lot of people in the entertainment industry and the music industry. I was taken to a uh, video release party of uh, Like a Virgin, and that was a, in a nightclub. They were showing videos all night. It was a club that, that DJed music videos. And that was one of my early inspirations of like, this is a way that I can combine music and uh, and visuals, uh, because I had always been a photographer and a bit of a cinephile as a kid back in Detroit. And having all this experience with my brother, I wanted to find a way. And mu music videos at that time were the hottest thing and the hottest format to get you into filmmaking because you could uh, attach yourself to some artist or some management company. One of my first experiences in the business was working on a music video for uh, The Cars. And um, I was introduced to the director through my brother because he had directed a number of videos for my brother's band, The Breakfast Club. His name was Jeff Stein. And uh, he was one of the premier music videos of the time in the mid 80s. I think uh, you would know his Alice in Wonderland, um, Tom Petty, Don't Come, here, Don't Come Around Here No More. He directed that. So I got to be on set on a Cars video and watch him come to set in the morning in pajamas and a t-shirt and stand in front of a monitor, a black and white monitor, and watch TV and then decide what bits of TV he liked and what bits he didn't like. And so uh, when I saw someone doing that, I was like, that's the job for me. I get to stand on set and watch television and say what's good and what's not good. Uh, so that was my first kind of introduction to real formal filmmaking. With that, I continued as a PA and uh, I worked at a video store on Broadway, at 659 Broadway, which I think is a skate shop now. And I watched movies incessantly, eventually found my way to Paris, thinking that I was going to go to a film school in Paris. I stayed there for a year, ultimately coming back to NYU and attending NYU undergrad for film and television and cinema studies. There, I hit a crossroads of actually having a music video career because I had been shooting little videos, uh, music videos for different hip hop artists who were coming in over the bridge to make these EPKs, I guess you'd call them, to take to record labels to try and get signed. So I had a bit of a reel and I got my first real opportunity to shoot something from Tommy Boy Records where I shot a video for De La Soul. Initially, it was going to be a, um, an EPK or a sales tool, and uh, I was doing it with some friends who were some art directors from uh, who had done the Information Society album. And uh, I, the guys came to me and they said, Kevin, you got camera equipment, you know how to edit, could you help us make this thing? And I think this was the shrewdest moment in my early career. I said, I'll help you, I'll cut it, but you have to make me co-director. And they agreed to that. and. Soon thereafter, um, the De La Soul video became one of the most popular hip hop videos of the time and Yo! MTV started. And so it was like a great kind of synergy, uh, which pushed, put wind in my sails for having a career in hip hop videos. It went on to work with, I went on to work with uh, a lot of people in the golden age of that time. Uh, Eric B and Rakim, Chub Rock, uh, Black Sheep, uh, nice and smooth, the list goes on. Uh, tons and tons of music videos. Well, I come in in the probably latter first third of music videos becoming a ubiquitous element in entertainment. And uh, when I was involved, I specifically worked in urban and hip hop uh, so at that time, there was a revolution in that we were the first ones in to be making and recording live action 
urban music activity, if that makes any sense. Um, so I think that was a very special time where, and, and, it, and any kind of media that you created help uh, record sales at that time was about showing, I felt showing either the philosophy of the band or the philosophy of the artist or some side of the artist that you would never have asked, but never have the, uh, the opportunity to see. Um, so uh, we would create these short films about these artists inspired by what we were learning about them or discerning from them or maybe collaborating with, with stories with them or sometimes just coming up with your own ideas and, and then building those ideas to make short little films. It was a really innocent time making music videos in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, it was a wild, wild west where you could be making a video for $500 or five hundred thousand um, dollars pretty much on average the music video world of hip-hop was uh, on the lower end of the totem pole so you had to be super inventive with what you did I think at that time uh, the use of the music video was to create record sales and now we had MTV we had video music box and then you had the imagery being used in nightclubs and that was to promote record sales and to get a look at your artist as it evolved i think i did my last music video for uh, an artist by the name of ashanti some of you might know who that is and that was in 2004 so i haven't really done a video i've done stuff that is vi music video inspired since then uh, for commercials and for television but i haven't done a video at that time which was the very late 80s and early 90s there was a very strong push and a lot of attention to urban entertainment. Um, the movie Juice was made. I directed the videos for Big Daddy Kane and Eric B. and Rakim for Juice. Los Angeles and the film industry was looking for new, young, interesting filmmakers. And uh, so I was being courted uh, for opportunities to make movies and that kind of thing. Ultimately, I moved to Los Angeles and I became friends with Mike, with Ice Cube's uh, manager, a guy by the name of Matt Alvarez, and we were developing a story together, and then a script came to Ice Cube called All About the Benjamins. I remember going to dinner with Ice Cube and never having shot anything of any duration, just short films at NYU, sight and sound projects and that type of thing, and Matt said, we're gonna go to dinner with Cube. We he likes your work, he wants you to possibly direct this movie. So I prepped and I went to dinner with him and uh, I think I charmed him just enough to get the gig. That put me on a set a few months later in Miami with Ice Cube and uh, Matt producing and Eva Mendez and Mike Epps. Uh, and we made a very successful little urban comedy. Rest is history. 